one of the things I did as a teacher, as an administrator, even at the school district level was I would spend a ton of my time outside at recess playing basketball with kids, playing dodgeball. I don't know if you're allowed to play dodgeball anymore, but <laughs> I would I would make time to connect with students, doing things that they were really excited about, honestly, that I love doing. And even as a principal, I try to spend as many opportunities out at recess, just connecting with students. I did every morning bus supervision. Uh, I did it at the end of the day, every single day. And it seems like a lot to, to do all those things. But the reality of it is, it saved me so much time because all the opportunities I had to connect with students, to connect with staff, connect with community, sometimes when you had to have a really tough conversation, it went from being uh, an hour to two minutes because you built those relationships ahead of time. So I always saw it as an investment that you're putting into people. When you actually take time to connect later on, uh, it will save you time. What, there is literally a book about this by Covey. It's called The Speed of Trust. And it says, when you actually have trust built into something, everything gets done quicker. When you don't have trust, everything takes way longer. Something that is really important to me is to kind of understand relationships are not the end all of education. If all you talk about is relationships and that's like, oh, we just, you know, we want to build relationships. Yeah, I get it. That's important. It's not the end all of what we do in education. We want people to be in a situation where they're really great learners that they actually eventually don't need us to be successful. But the reality of it is relationships are the foundation. They're the foundation you set down to get to that point. Because how could actually someone be pushed if they don't know if you got their back? And that's why it matters so much. The reason I bring this up is because I had a great conversation with Dondre Harris. He is a principal currently in Bryant, Arkansas with Bryant Schools at Bryant Middle School. And I, I had the blessing to join his staff and really he talked about how he builds relationships with the students with the staff how he really tries to get to know people and the reason him and i connected is because right before i was about to speak he sent me a tweet made me feel so warm and welcome and it made it elevated me to just do great with his staff to feel welcome to feel appreciated before i, I talk so he doesn't just talk about this he lives this and you know when you know someone's got your back you tend to do better you know, somebody believes in you. And that's what Dondre did for me. I'm so appreciative. You're going to love him. Awesome guy. Make sure you connect with him. His social media is down below. But thanks again for being here for another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kuros. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am blessed today to have a principal from Bryant Schools in Bryant, Arkansas. I was just there, an amazing staff. They were so kind and welcoming to me. Uh, I think you're, by the way, I shared a Ryan Gosling story. Your superintendent loves Ryan Gosling. So I think <laughs> she loves me for sharing a Ryan Gosling story while I was there, which is like, just, I got on her good side just with that <laughs> one story. Um, Don Jay was, is just an absolutely amazing human being. Uh, I really love his, his leadership insights. He reached out to me and I said, Hey, let's, let's, let's get a podcast, man. Let's, let's get going. So, um, Don Jay has been a, a PE teacher coach. Um, he's been a principal at the elementary level. He's currently a principal at the middle school level, done a lot of great stuff, incredible leader, but I'll let him tell a little bit about himself. So Don Jay, if you could just introduce yourself, who you are, what you do today, how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Okay, well, Dondre Harris. Uh, I have one son, Dondre Harris Jr., who we call Deuce. I've been married to Latoria for 16 years, entering my 20th year in education, uh, graduate of University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, and then worked in the Mississippi Delta region, uh, worked in inner cities and in suburban areas, uh, and you know, it's kind of almost born into the educational field with you know, my father being in education. Hmm. Uh, I got an aunt that's in education, uncles that are in education. Uh, but that's that's pretty much me in a in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and you you said you were like, did you go from being a PE teacher to a uh, principal? Yeah, it's and it, it's a funny story. Um, I hope I don't get in trouble for telling this story, but I'll, <laughs> I'll tell it. If you say anything, so, I will cut it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I was, um, I was, I, I actually came to the, this district, to the Bryant School District, as a uh, football coach, wrestling coach, and uh, PE teacher. 
And so at the time, the state of Arkansas, there had to be 60 minutes of PE per week for every kid. So I was, there were two PE teachers at, at the school I was at. Um, and so the state changed the law to 40 minutes. So they didn't need two PE teachers, but I had already signed my contract. So I, I had a job somewhere. And so they wound up moving me to the high school and, and um, I was doing some things with uh, RTI and, um, and, and helping ninth graders on that campus with some response to intervention. And so fast forward the current high school principal, um, it's about, had to be about February. He takes a job at another district and they let him out the contract. And so they move one of the interims to, I mean, one of the assistant principals to be the interim principal, which vacated the spot. Mm -hmm. And I guess since I was kind of an expendable <laughs> position that they, they right. kind of made that year, uh, it, it was kind of fitting for me to to slide into it. But what happened, I I was coaching wrestling, and wrestling ends about the end of February. We're getting ready for the state tournament, and we had a professional development day. And uh, I had a volunteer assistant who was not tied to the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, kids got out of school early. Teachers stayed for professional development. Well, I was going to let my kids practice uh, while we were in PD. But my volunteer assistant, he he couldn't get there at that time. So the kids were down there. They're really unsupervised. Uh, don't ever do that. <laughs> unsupervised. So somebody comes through the gym where they're practicing at and calls the athletic director. And the athletic director says, uh, hey, uh, he calls me and says, you got these kids down in the gym unsupervised. I'm like, okay, all right, uh, I'm going to go down. So I go down there, check on them, say, hey, you all chill out for a little bit. <laughs> Let's not do this. So as I'm leaving to go back up to um, the high school where the professional development was at, uh, another assistant principal calls me and said, hey, you need to go to the superintendent's office. I'm like, oh, no. what? <laughs> like what? And I'm thinking the athletic director has snitched on me. That's what I'm thinking. He didn't call the superintendent. I got kids unsupervised. And um, I go in the superintendent's office. And uh, at the time, the superintendent, he said, uh, hey, you ready to be a next interim assistant principal at the high school? I'm like, I got the state tournament <laughs> next week. Uh, and he's like, oh, OK, well, just let me know in the morning. I'm like, what do you mean? I, I got leave me a little bit more time to think about this. And so that's kind of how it happened. I became wow. interim and then had they opened it up, interviewed, and and that's how I kind of got into the administrative <laughs> role. <laughs> that's awesome. You know, there I have I have a little bit of a story like that, but I'm not gonna share it just yet because <laughs> I would actually get me in trouble. But because you know, sometimes someone else leaving opens up a door that you're not just ready for, but you gotta go through and you'll figure yeah. it out, you know, when you're on the other side. So I I love that. And uh I know that when you coach, I think there's a lot of things that, I, you know, and I'm very obviously passionate about sports. Uh, I have been impacted so positively uh, by my coaches through the years. I still contact many of them and they've had an impact on me. Uh, my basketball coach, I loved, he passed away several years ago, but I think about him like 10 times a week easily. Every time I skip Cause he like made a skip all the time. And I like, I'm great. I, it was like, I hated it when I was a kid. And I'm thankful he taught me that. And it's a lot of discipline there. When you went from, you know, coaching to an administrative position in a school, um, obviously there's some, you know, connection to, you know, how you lead people in, in sports. What were some of the things that you saw as really, um, important from your coaching experience that helped you, you know, take over and, and start leading schools? Uh, one thing that I come to realize is, you know, good programs, whether it's football, basketball, whatever sport it is, I believe coaches have this thing figured out. Uh, when we think about teaching, good teaching, um, intervening, you know, every, and I think about how football practices run, game on Friday, uh, you start breaking down the film. So Monday, you introduce it to your kids, same way you would do in the classroom. Um, film the practice. And then you fix what you messed up on Monday on Tuesday. Mm. All right? Yep. Do it again. Look at it. And then on Wednesday, you fix what you messed up on Tuesday. <laughs> then do it again. 
And on Thursday, you know, you you polish it up. You you want to make it right. make it look good before you get to that what we would call a a CFA or a CSA, mm. and you play on Friday. And it's the same thing that we do every week with our RTI rotations. We want to introduce material to kids, and then we want to intervene when they don't get it, and then we want to give it a, give it to them again, and then intervene when they don't get. And then by the test, which is the game, we want them to do it, to do it the right way. Um, and, and then we also look at the, the game film. And, and I inter- tell my teachers like this, that's the game film. That's our CSA. We don't, we don't really intervene af- after that, but we can find some things that we may have done wrong. Yeah. Um, and, and some things I learned from other coaches is that um, – some most some programs that, that are in larger schools, the head coach, you know, really coaches the coaches. And if the running backs aren't, aren't doing what they're supposed to do, it's the running backs coach fault. It's not right. the running backs fault. It's the running right. backs coach fault. But I think when we get into the classroom, if kids are not learning or showing mastery or proficiency in an area, it's not the teacher's fault. It's the kid's fault. Hmm. So I think that taking a little bit more ownership on what can I do different. Uh, because right. I'm a firm believer that learning, <laughs> and I told this to my teachers, and they, I said, learning is going to take place whether we want it to or not. Mm. It, it's just our job as adults and teachers to guide in the right direction because some they're going to learn how to do drugs. They're going right. to learn how to have sex. They're going to learn how to do these things regardless of me as a classroom teacher, but yeah. somebody's going to teach them and they're going to learn how to do it. So they can learn. So I, I, I we got to we remove the, the notion that kids cannot learn. Right. We want to learn. learn good stuff, right? And yes, that, good stuff. <laughs> you know, you know, there's a, I, I heard the saying once, I thought it was really, really interesting. It said, if, if a teacher shares something with a student a hundred times and the student doesn't get it, it's not the student who's a slow learner, right? If they say the same thing a hundred times over in the same way, a student doesn't get it, it's not, it's not the kid who's learning slow, right? And I think there's this balance too, right? Like obviously, you know, like if, if an athlete shows up to practice and they don't put any effort in there, there's like, there's got there's something you have to have in, in there as well, but it's also like kind of adapting, trying to figure out different ways to, to, you know, lead different people, not just say like, Hey, it's my, it's like, I, I, I very, I said this in areas mindset, basically my, when I actually first started teaching, it was like, you are going to learn the way I teach. And that, and I'm going to, and as, but then it's like, no matter what, like it's, you will adapt to me. And I think as I grew in my profession as like, really, Hey, I got to figure out kind of how to adapt to the people I'm serving. Cause you know, every, every year we have different kids and they have different yeah. needs and different abilities. And so really, you know, there's, there's always obviously something we put into it ourselves, but you know, that's part of our job is to kind of figure out different ways to do this. Um, one of the things that you said when we were kind of prepping for this you said about how important, you know, it is to build relationships with your community. And really, you know, as you kind of evidence in that, you know, that answer, really knowing who you serve and kind of figuring out there, how do you, why do you see that as so important? And like, what are some of the things you do as a principal to connect with your, your staff and your students? I know I had a, a mentor tell me that we're in the business of customer service. Mm-hmm. And so if we're going to inconvenience anybody, is it inconvenience us. And so if you go into whatever store that you choose to shop at, you know, it's it's better to go where you feel comfortable. I know some people say, well, I don't like Walmart. I say, well, go to Kroger or go to Target, you know, go where you feel comfortable. And it's the same thing with schools. Go where you feel comfortable. It's almost like Cheers. Go a place where everybody knows your name. Right. And uh, I know one of my goals is to learn all my kids' names. Uh, so one thing that I do, and it it helps. It is not it's not a perfect system, but we have school IDs, and I I print every kid's ID. If they need a replacement, I print it, and with a picture on it, so that way I can learn the kids' names, learn their middle names, give them a nickname, mm. uh, and so in the mornings we. You know, our, we, we like to play music. We play music in the morning at car drop off and I have a microphone. And so right. if, 
if you if your parents drop you off, I say, George, good morning. You know? <laughs> and uh, and you know, it, it embarrassed the kids some, but yeah. some smile and some parents love it. They'll have their phones out recording, uh, things like that. But that. if you can address somebody uh, by name, and like you asked, make sure that you say somebody's name correctly. Yeah, you know, that that means something, especially when you have a name. You're like, my name is Dondre. I get called DeAndre or, mm -hmm. or or something like that. But if you take the time out to, you know, understand me and know my name and, and then know where I come from, know what I like, you know, it's it builds a, a relationship. And that way uh, you can have different conversations. And if I have a kid that I have I have given a nickname to, mm -hmm. I've talked to their parents or I've gone to their house, you know, I, I can talk to that kid differently than a teacher who's having right. trouble with this kid. Uh, I might be able to you know, talk a little rougher to them or pull them in and they may listen to me more. And I think it goes the same way with teachers. Um, there's been mm. times where if a t I notice a teacher's having a tough time, I'll, I'll, I'll text or call her husband. Hey, mm. everything okay? Or uh, if somebody has passed in their family, I know I had a teacher a few years ago, her, her mother-in-law passed and so i reached out to her husband and say hey, just checking on you make sure you're okay i know you know just showing a little uh empathy to their situation and you know i think that helped yeah. my teacher even though i was reaching out to her husband yeah that you know I, I, first of all you're gonna probably get in trouble you're gonna probably get kicked out of arkansas because you said that you can go somewhere else other than walmart isn't that like <laughs> did you know i supposed to say that like walmart uh, Arkansas is like Walmart, is it not? Yeah, it is. It's the you're Walmart. Gonna be a you're gonna be a troll. I'll I'll see if I edit that out. If I don't edit it out, you don't have a job. I know what happened. So hey, I, I, I shop at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't. Well, you guys can't say anything different now. That's for sure. So, um, that you know the I one of the things I love about this podcast. I know somebody's gonna hear that and they're like, I'm totally doing that with our like school drop off because. A lot of people dread the school drop off, right? And if you so like, it's probably not as smooth as anyone would like it to be. But at least if you can kind of make it fun, there's a real power in this. Uh, one of my favorite books I read over the last year or so was uh, Unreasonable Hospitality by Will Gadara. He talks about, um, he basically says we're all in the customer service business. And he's talking about from the perspective of uh, a restaurant. But I'll tell you, that was like, that book has had one of the biggest impacts on me on educational leadership and how we connect with people, um, how we learn about them, how big of an impact it can have. And, you know, being able to know, cause I, I, I was like very similar to you when I was, you know, principal, I went out of my way to connect with students as many informal times possible, whether it's recess in the morning when they're leaving, because sometimes you're gonna have to have a tough conversation with them. And if they don't, if they're not sure if they, you know them, that's a way harder conversation. And you know, it's, it's way tougher, but if you're like, can go like, dude, come on. Right. If you, if you have that where you can just kind of give a look and they actually care enough about you, cause you know, they know you care about them. It really changes uh, how we connect. All right. So we are, we are, is, this is August. This is going to be broadcast in September. So brand new school year. Uh, and blessed how, how blessed I was to be able to uh, kind of help kick off your year. Personally, what is one thing that you are trying to do this year? Maybe a little bit different, maybe something, you know, something you're trying to learn. Is there any one thing that you're like, okay, hey, this is something I want to work on this year? Um, I would say, well, first of all, let me say you, you did a great job kicking us off this year. Let me, let me say that first. They're awesome. It was an easy group. <laughs> By the way, before uh, I get before I got you to answer, one of the things I loved about your district was not only did you have students, you had a staff choir, and they like made me cry. Like they were so <laughs> good. I've, I've I've rarely seen that. That really, I actually wrote a blog post about it that's coming up soon. So it it really made a difference on me. But yeah, they were. It was an easy day because you you all did such a good job setting me up. So oh, that was uh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> So what's the what's the one thing what's the one thing you want to work on this year that you want to try to do? Uh, I guess like I mentioned before, you know, we get a we're a sixth and seventh grade campus, so our seventh graders go on the eighth, we lose them, then we get a new crop of sixth graders that that come in. And one of my goals is always to to know 
to know the kids. Mm -hmm. And and we have a short window to know them, learn their story. Uh, so just trying to do that as quickly as possible. Uh, just I, I'm big on relationships because mm -hmm. the, the people that I had in my life growing up in education or uh, through sports, you know, I, I still connect with these people today. And it was based off the relationship that, that we had. And so I, I really want to harp on, uh, and, and I do this, you know, every year, all year, mm -hmm. is, is that relationship piece. Um, but the way that I've got to work on it is through the communication. Yep. Um, I, I want to do a better job. I will do a better job of, of communicating uh, with parents, uh, with staff, and really branching out and getting to more community uh, partners involved to where we we are at Bryant Middle School in the city of Bryant. Yeah. So we want to let everybody know that we are a part of the city of Bryant and mm -hmm. the Bryant School District. Well, it's funny that you say that because um, the reason I, I asked you on the podcast, uh, first of all, was I came into, I'm like going from place to place to place. So I don't even know where I am half the time, right? Like if you asked me where I was yesterday, I couldn't tell you, right? And it's just, everything's a blur. So I'm like tired. Uh, I also don't know anybody. And before I spoke, you tweeted, uh, welcome to me. And it just gave me energy. And then you reached out to me, asked me a question. I'm like, dude, you gotta be on my podcast. And I like wrote back to you within seconds because you taking the time to connect with me made me want to connect with you even more. So obviously you live what you're talking about and I hope more and more people connect with you. Um, so you can kind of see where Dondre is connected down below um, social media. It, this is a Saturday. I asked you to do this during the week and you're like, and I'm like, well, I, only, I won't be able to do this for a couple of weeks if we can't do it. And you're like, well, I'm like, what about Saturday? And you're like, so you took time over your Saturday. I probably helped you out a little bit because you had something <laughs> that you got, you got to miss, but, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> No, I'm leaving that in. So Andre, <laughs> thank you so much for taking time out of a Saturday to connect with me, to share some ideas with the audience. I hope everyone connects with you uh, and, and just really appreciate you and appreciate everyone there at Brian. So thanks for, thanks for being on here today. Hey, thanks for having me. I really, really appreciate it. Man, I, I so appreciate you. I hope our paths cross again sooner or later. If you're in Orlando, man, I'm expecting you to come, come, sit, come hang out. So I'd love to see you here. Will do. All right. Thanks everyone for listening. Have a wonderful day.